next speaker is Ken Addy from Acceleron, who will be talking about myostatin inhib inhibition. Hi, all, and thanks for um, the invitation to speak with you. Um, I'm going to speak to you today about uh, the, the preliminary results from a phase two trial of a novel therapeutic in patients with FSHD. That's a sentence you don't hear at this meeting too often, but hopefully that's going to change. Um, I work for a company called Acceleron Pharma. We've been around for almost 15 years. All of our drugs are in the same proton protein family called TGF-beta, and myostatin is one of the members of this family. Uh, the name implies it's something that prevents muscle from growing. It's a naturally occurring protein, myostatin, um, also known as GDF8. And so why does the body have something that prevents muscle from growing? And that's basically something that's true in all systems in, in the body. We have stimulators, we have inhibitors. This happens to be an inhibitor. Uh, we like to refer to our products that we're developing now as myostatin plus inhibitors because it's not just myostatin. There are other members of this family of proteins that can inhibit muscle, including activins and other GDFs. Um, so, you know, myostatin was discovered 20 years ago, and, and, and now finally we're figuring out ways to, to try and utilize uh, blocking the inhibitor in order to stimulate muscle growth. So we currently have, um, we've been working in the neuromuscular field for about 10 years. We've done studies with myostatin inhibitors in Duchenne. Uh, we've thought about um, other diseases, FSHD, as long ago as 10 years ago. But now with these newer uh, molecules that we've developed, these are our sort of second generation molecules, uh, we're now actually embarking, and FSHD was selected by us as the first um, muscular dystrophy to, to look into. We also have a study now in Charcot-Marie tooth disease. Um, we have two uh, drugs in development right now. ACE2494 on the left is a systemic therapy, so it's one that you, we give uh, by subcutaneous injection. It goes into the bloodstream and can affect the entire body. Uh, there are other companies, Pfizer, Novartis, Roche, others who have systemic myostatin inhibitors in development for other diseases. Uh, right now we're in healthy volunteers in the phase one trial. But I'm going to speak to you today about ACE83. That's our locally acting muscle um, drug. And as I mentioned, it's in phase two trials now. We've completed our phase one trial in healthy volunteers. It's in the June issue of Muscle and Nerve, uh, written up. And, uh, and now we're in phase two trials, which means we're doing patient studies in FSHD and CMT. So you may ask, why would we bother to make a drug that only acts locally uh, in one or two muscles where, that we are injecting into instead of the systemic one. And so the answer, there's three answers really. One is that um, it acts locally and when it gets out from the muscle into the bloodstream, it's broken down rapidly. So we have no systemic effects, but we have no systemic side effects. So we're making a drug that could be, have a very nice safety profile with very few adverse events, right? Secondly is sometimes we just want to treat certain muscles. And so diseases where there's focal involvement, that means specific muscles are involved at different times, maybe asymmetrically, um, maybe we want to target individual muscles. Um, but the third reason is the most important reason, and that is that these um, hormones, if you will, are, don't only act in an endocrine way and travel in the bloodstream to go from one place to another. Myostatin is actually made locally in the muscle. It's what we call an autocrine factor. It's, it's made in the muscle and then it acts on the muscle. And so there's a lot more myostatin in the muscle than what we're able to um, neutralize in the bloodstream. So when we give a high, you know, higher concentration of drug into the muscle, I'm going to show you results that, that we're seeing about three times as much muscle growth as uh, any systemic uh, agent has been able to do. And I've done studies for many years with growth hormones and, and uh, other agents uh, that um, it's, it's a similar issue. Um, myostatin seems to be uh, the most potent way to build muscle, and we're finding that the local administration is also quite potent. So we selected, as I showed on the last slide, a couple of muscles in particular that we're interested in. Um, we, this is based on what Dr. Statlin was uh, discussing earlier, uh, a survey of all of you in the FSH Society that we undertook to, to find out which muscles are important to you in daily life. Uh, we've talked to patient focus groups like we did today. Um, and we found that you know, there are muscles that we can treat 
uh, in the upper arm or the lower leg that will address foot drop, for example, um, and, and re reduce the risk of falls, hopefully, and of course help you to bring your arm to your body and, and a lot of activities that involve um, bicep strength. That's not to say we won't go into other muscles in the future, but these were uh, proof of concept, if you will, muscles that we are targeting initially. And I won't go into too much detail on how this works, but the idea is uh, if the drug can bind the myostatin and, and bind to it, then the myostatin can't bind to the muscle cell and, and inhibit the muscle growth. And we're, make, we're taking advantage of a naturally occurring inhibitor of the inhibitor, and it's called folistatin. And folistatin uh, you know, has been thought about because it's one of the most potent ways to do this, um, but it's very hard to make it uh, last in the body for a long enough time to work, but we found a way to make it sticky and stay in the muscle. And as I mentioned, also it uh, breaks down as soon as it goes into the circulation. So we have this potent inhibitor of myostatin in the muscle that we inject into and, and that has uh, hopefully very few um, systemic effects and adverse events. Uh, so this is our trial. It's ongoing in the US as well as Canada and Spain. We've completed part one and we've started part two. Part one is on the left uh, where we do a dose escalation. We try different dose levels um, in groups of patients, either in the TA muscle, that's the one in the lower leg for foot drop, and the biceps in another group of patients. You can see the eligibility criteria, and our objectives, of course, are safety, tolerability, and then muscle growth um, and function. And I'm going to share with you some of the MRI results that you also heard described recently uh, with those voxels. And we've counted all the voxels, and I'll show you the results. For the first two cohorts, um, cohorts were the 150 and 200 milligrams. And I just want to show you on the right side of the slide that um, we're now in part two. That means it's going to be placebo controlled. So half the patients get placebo, half get the active drug for six months. And then in the second six months, everyone's going to get the active drug. First, a uh, review of the safety for these uh, initial um, 24 patients. Um, well tolerated, there were some discomfort and other injection site reactions at the point where the, where the drug is being administered. Uh, but otherwise, we saw very little in the in ways of other adverse events uh, beyond the, the muscle that was being injected. Uh, we looked at uh, laboratory results, and they were also, um, we didn't see any abnormalities uh, of note. <coughs> What about efficacy? So now we take those MRI scans that we do at the beginning and we repeat them during the study. The MRI results I'm showing here are from day 106. So we inject uh, the, the patients uh, five times every three weeks. And so the last injection was day 85. So this is three weeks after that last injection. We do another MRI and we measure the muscle volume. So you're seeing here the total muscle volume. We scan the entire muscle, whether it's the TA or the biceps. And you can see here that the muscle volume uh, didn't change appreciably. If you look at the tibialis anterior in the untreated side, we only treated one side. But in the side that did get the drug, you see an 8% increase uh, from baseline at the lower dose and a 16 or 17% increase uh, at the higher dose. And in the biceps, we also saw about 18%. So let's think back to what I told you earlier. We sort of hit a, a threshold, a, a, a max with systemic therapies around 5% with these other drugs, including our own uh, systemic that we've used in the past. So in that five to seven, you know, three to 7% range, um, but around 5%, here we're seeing um, over 15%. And there's another bullet up there that we saw a decrease in fat fraction. So when we look at those voxels, we measure the percentage of fat in each of the uh, in, uh, muscle areas that we look at, intramuscular fat. And that's actually being shown to decrease um, by about 5% on the tibialis anterior patients. So this is telling us that we're adding lean muscle um, and increasing the size of good contractile muscle fibers uh, with this treatment. Now we have a lot more endpoints um, that we're going to share later this year, hopefully, or next year uh, when we uh, complete the analysis uh, of these data. But this is the uh, MRI results for now. Um, it's a multi-center trial, now it's a multinational trial. These are the centers in the U.S. who are currently recruiting patients, so thank you. <laughs>